Hey, this is Horner and this is 2002 AP Physics B. Uh, free response question number one. This is uh, what we're going to work through, look at some potential energy here on this graph. Notice that we have position both positive and we have negative positions. And you have a three kilogram object. It is subject to a restoring force. So that means that it's either uh, something that's attached to a spring. Maybe the spring is attached to the ceiling. Then you've got a ball here and that ball is moving up and down, sorry for the bad picture, or you have a pendulum which is swinging back and forth. So one of the two, doesn't matter which one it is, uh, we're just going to do some things with the graph first. It says that the particular object has a total energy of 0.4 joules. That means that the total energy, if it's equal to 0.4, it cannot be any bigger than that. So this is the maximum potential energy or kinetic energy it could have, or the sum of the two together would have to be 0.4. So no more than that. They want to know what is the object's potential energy when its displacement is 4 centimeters from equilibrium. So if we go to 4 centimeters, positive 4 centimeters, and move up on the graph, put a dot, and move over, we see that it's about half of 0.1. Be careful because your answer here is not 0.5. That's way up here. The answer that we want is going to be potential energy at 4 centimeters is equal to 0.05 joules. Notice this is half of 0.1, and that would be 0.05. So you get a point for reading a graph, which is always nice. That makes it easy. It says, what is the furthest the object moves along the x-axis in the positive direction? Um, remember, the most energy that you could have that's potential is going to be 0.4. So we're going to take this and just scratch it off, and we're going to do the same thing over here. And so the furthest it can go in the positive direction is going to be this 10 centimeters, because that's where it would have just potential energy. So uh, it's going to be positive 10 centimeters. I would make sure to put the positive. Uh, if you don't, then they might question what you did. So you definitely want to add the point, uh, the uh, positive for that answer. And the reasoning here is the total energy is equal to 0.4 joules. Um, therefore, the maximum amount of potential energy you can have is also 0.4 joules. If that's correct, then the maximum uh, position that you would have in the positive direction also is 0.10 centimeters because of the graph. Uh, and you would probably say looking at the graph, looking at the graph, the maximum potential energy is this because the total energy is this and therefore that uh, position's got to be about 10 centimeters. For the next part, uh, this is part C, it says determine the object's kinetic energy when its displacement is negative 7 centimeters. So let's go back up to the graph again. I'm going to just cross this off, and this is C. We're going to say what is the kinetic energy equal to when uh, your displacement or our x value is equal to negative 7 centimeters. So we're going to go over to negative 7 centimeters, and it looks like that our potential energy here is equal to 0.2 at negative 7 centimeters. If that's true and total energy is equal to potential plus kinetic, our total energy is 0.4, potential is 0.2 plus kinetic. Obviously our kinetic here is going to be equal to 0.2 joules also. Uh, they actually take a range of answers here anywhere from 0.18 joules all the way up to 0.22 joules. So as long as you had an answer in that range. And so this makes it a little easier. You could actually see where it might be just a little bit lower, maybe 0.18. Uh, but depending on how people saw it, depending on printing errors, that's the answer that they allowed you to have. So that is part C. For part D, it says, what is the object's speed at x equals 0? So I'm going to move it back up again here. And we're going to find uh, question mark V. So what is the speed at x is equal to 0? Uh, centimeters. And so now we've got zero centimeters right here. We want to know what is the speed. Well, obviously there's no potential energy here. So potential energy is equal to zero. That means that our kinetic energy has got to be equal to the full amount, 0.4 joules, because remember total energy is equal to potential plus kinetic. 
and so if total energy is 0.4 joules, our potential is zero, then our kinetic has got to be equal to that 0.4. Uh, so at this point, now what we can do is just say kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared, which means that our velocity is equal to two times the kinetic energy, all divided by the mass, and we have to take the square root of that because this is squared. Uh, if you go through and do your math, you should end up with an answer here. Well, let's plug our numbers in because that'll be important. important. 2 times 0.4 all divided by 3, and you'll get an answer of 0.5 meters per second. For the very last part of this problem, they ask you something a little bit different. Now they tell you exactly what this thing is. So you could have cheated and gone, well, it's really not cheating. It's probably really smart to do. Go down to letter E. It says, suppose the object undergoes this motion because it is a bob of a simple pendulum shown above. If the object breaks loose, so if the object breaks loose right here, okay, at the instant the pendulum hits the bottom, they want to know what is the distance left to right that it travels. So notice that this is 0.5 meters. So we're going to be able to use that 0.5 meters to kind of help us figure out um, how far it went. But the first thing we need to do is if something is dropping and it's doing this motion, remember this is just simple projectile motion. Um, and remember in projectile motion we're only worried about the y axis. And so here we're going to say dy is equal to 1 half g t squared. So let's go ahead and find the time it takes for it to fall because the time it takes to fall is the same as the time it takes to move left to right which means that now we could find the distance since we know the speed at this point. So the first thing we're going to do is say d is equal to one half of gravity times time squared. We need to find the time so time here is just equal to the square root of two times the distance uh, that's the distance in the y, uh, all over g, and so that's equal to 2 times the distance in the y, which is 0.5, and then we're going to go ahead and divide that by 10 because it makes it easy, and so our time here is 0.3 seconds. The other equation is vx is equal to dx over t, and we want to know dx and we already know Vx from a previous part of the problem. The velocity was 0.5 meters per second in a previous part of the problem from part D, and our time is 0.3 seconds. So if you multiply those two together, you will find out that your final answer um, should be, so 5 times 3, so that would be about 0.15 meters. So that would be about 0.15 meters. If you round it, it's uh, going to be closer to somewhere around 0.2. And if you would actually look at the answer key online, they actually do that. They go ahead and round it. But we'll go ahead and leave our answer here. Uh, and that would be the correct distance from left to right is 0.15 meters. Pretty lengthy problem, worth lots of points, but still a really good problem. Really tackles a lot of things we've seen before.